My goal with this series is I want to use AI to create all of the code in my game without me having to actually write it. In a way, I am directing the code, but I'm not writing it. And the reason why I am trying to do this is because part of me, I enjoy this approach so much that I want to prove out to myself that this is possible to produce a production game using this workflow. And I think this workflow is going to take me all the way to the finish line. So this is a new map. There's now this, I think there's 17, I call them HUD icons that represent the nodes. And these are all generated randomly per game session based on the seed. So I've added these pens where you can just click on it and it'll take you to where you need to focus on. If I come to this pin right here and I click on it, my party will move towards it. And right now I just have a temporary function there ready for me to implement something. You'll see that the, the HUD display just moved on to the next node, which is a common enemy. I think this should be enough um, to defeat it. Now I've kind of cleaned up my smart camera during combat, but there's still a lot of bugs in it. So if you see the camera going a little bit wonky, uh, it's a work in progress. And there's a bunch of temp art that comes up. So this is the merchant node. I've created the art asset and this is still kind of temp. I was thinking like, it'll be cool if there's that dinosaur that comes up and the, the actual store is on its back. Uh, still working on it. A lot of this art is just to get it in. But the actual node itself, like the quest node, isn't functional. So if I click on it here, let me see, uh, my party will move there. Again, a empty canvas comes up. Obviously, the last node is this boss node. This, you'll see this icon where my mouse is. And again, I didn't write any code. And I think that's the main takeaway here, that it is possible to make like a game that looks relatively double A um, in terms of quality without actually writing any code. And if you're wondering, okay, what is the workflow that I'm using? There's two videos that I've already made on this that uh, cover this in depth. Nothing has changed since then. And at the end of this video, I'll show you just like a quick example of how I use it. Um, so I, as far as the UI stuff that I've been working on, this little button right here says cards. If I click on it, it'll show all the cards that I currently have in my uh, card pool. And here I've added some buttons that allows me to sort it based on cost and then sort it based on name, alphabetical order. And then if I return, I go back here. It's not very clear right now, but if you click on the cards themselves, this one is my draw pile is on the right side and the rest went into my hand. And then there's also discard pile. So anytime I discard a pile, let me play some cards so they get discarded. And I open this, it goes into discard pile. And this is an example of a treasure node. Again, it's not really implemented. There is some art there. I feel like the art and stuff is in a decent spot for me to start developing it. That's why I figured this is a good time for me to create this video because the, ne the next video that, that I post, it's going to be with all the nodes actually implemented, um, hopefully. And I think when I'm developing this, it's kind of like you're converging on a game. So it's like nothing's ever really done. And I, I, I do like that kind of workflow because even some of the most polished games that you know, that you play, they're filled with thousands of bugs. It's just that it's um, unlikely that you'll run into them while you're playing. My workflow is very uneventful now, which I really like. It just means I can just develop. Usually I try to make a video when I have something interesting to add. So if you don't see much posted for me, it just means that I'm just developing. And uh, once I get to a good spot where I feel like I've worked on and finished enough features, then I usually end up posting something. But this is relatively new to me because up to this point, I've been going from ChatGPT, Gemini, and uh, Claude, or yeah, it is Claude, Sonnet. Um, but it is nice finally getting to a state where I don't have to keep jumping to the next best model where I'm not looking for the best model necessarily. I just want a model that allows me to develop my game. And if I'm using a model that like Claude code and I'm not running to any issues and I'm able to 
code all the features that I need for my game, then I'm just going to use that. But so far, I also think that um, there's really, currently, I just don't see an alternative. OK, so that's the boss. My party is quite far away. So the boss doesn't have like special mechanics yet, but eventually I'm going to add a lot of cool stuff. But right now it's just a big um, damage sponge. I think that's the term they use for it. it. Has a lot of health and it doesn't do anything special. The main metric that I use is am I converging on the ideal state in my game? And as long as I'm moving forward in the right direction, then I'm happy. Because even before AI, when I'm working on like larger actual teams and developing games, we're just converging on the right answer without AI. It's like everything is super buggy. So in this case, even though the workflow feels a little bit odd for some people, maybe for me, it feels very familiar because game development, it just feels like it's a buggy mess until you're like, oh, wait a minute, we have a real game where you've reduced the bug count enough where the game just doesn't crash and it just feels like a real game. At least based on my experience, I don't want to just say every game studio is like this, but every game studio that I've worked at, especially before the AI stuff came on, it just felt that way. So that's why it feels very natural. And by felt that way, I just mean the whole thing is just a big bug fest until it's not. If you're a, a game developer in Unity and you haven't tried Cloud Code yet, you really should. Until I finish this game and launch it and call it like it's done, it's released, I am hesitant to like, pat myself on the back and um, call this a viable workflow. Because I really want to prove to myself that this workflow that is just so much fun to use is real. It can't just be a simple YouTuber, right? Like a YouTube video. It needs to be like a real production and a real release. Because in the end, it's very easy to produce stuff for a video format, but the real judgment becomes whether or not this actually works. For someone like me, who isn't a programmer and wants to create a game by directing the code, the ultimate test is releasing the game and it being a real game. For this final step, I'm going to, for funsies, try to add a new feature. Or not a feature. It's, this is like, um, I've intentionally made this super simple, but it might be nice for somebody to see how I would solve an issue that I want to solve in this game right now. So let me go ahead and pull up my version control. What is this? I don't know what this is. Discard, fetch, fetch. OK, so it is the latest. And usually my workflow is all on a Mac, and I don't type anything out. But I haven't figured out how to do that in a way where I can record on my Windows PC. So just know that while I'm using Claude code on Windows, this is not how I work. Um, it's all on a laptop. I move around and I talk to it 95% of the time. But recording wise, it's just much easier for me to do it on Windows and type everything out because it goes to the same screen that I'm recording. So the feature that I want to add is here. Let me see. When I press the cards button here, right now it says you start each combat with all, and then this is card count, cards shown here. I want to take this card count and just actually have it literally count the cards in my deck. I have a cards full view canvas in my game. When I press it, there's a button in my game that activates the cards full view panel canvas. When I press it, there is a section, a text section inside of the canvas that says you start each combat with all and then there is a bracket that says card count and an end bracket. And then it says cards shown here. So I want you to help me um, add the card count that is contained in the cards full view panel canvas. Go ahead. And here I can launch Claude and then paste my text. Now, in the previous video, I showed you how I use subagents. But because this specific task is so narrow and it's not that complicated, I don't need subagents for this paste. So this should be the exact text 
that you saw me speaking. I only get involved with reading the code and really understanding all of the methods and what's going on when things break. But generally speaking, a lot of the features that I'm working on, they're, they don't have a lot of dependencies. It gets a little bit complicated when they do have a lot of dependencies and that's where I have to slow down. But a lot of the things in, that I've worked on, um, not everything is all that, most things aren't that complicated. Uh, and I think this would be an example of one where I'm not really, as long as it works, I'm not too worried about if the code is clean. Normally here, the way I would respond is through voice, but I'll just type this out. So I basically told it, hey, don't worry about it. I'll manually drag and drop the game object into whichever script component you want me to do um, that too. And so that um, it has the reference. So a big skill set to, um, or a big thing to figure out is when you really need to plan things out in detail and when you don't need to. And this example is one that is nice. I don't need to plan this. It's super simple. So here we have the new card count text. Let me add the header, header text, non-text. What does it say non-text? Okay. Um, I, I, I'm going to guess here. It, it, it's not letting me drag and drop it. I'm probably, I'm going to guess that it doesn't realize maybe it's a text mech. Maybe it's a text mesh pro. I'm going to double check that. I have no idea, but um, I think that might be it. It's not letting me add the reference. Okay, this, we're in combat, first node. Let me see if I open this up. You start each combat with uh, all 20 cards. If I count it, one, two, three, four, five, times four, that's 20. Looks good. So yeah, um, that's that's it. That's my updates. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And um, yeah, take care. Bye.